In this series, we're going to be making a Doom clone in Unity from scratch. We'll be covering a little bit of everything from player movement to polishing and adding effects. In this video, we're going to set up a basic scene and have a basic player move around it. We're going to start with a new project named Doom Clone, and for this project we'll be using the built-in render pipeline just by selecting the standard 3D template. So we're going to start with a fresh project, and this has the default layout. The first thing we want to do is go into our scene folder and rename our scene. So let's do some basic scene setup. We're going to expand our scene. We're going to go to our main camera first. Let's change the clear flags to a solid color. And here we're just going to use a dark gray. Now we can go over here and drag our game window down here to the corner right. I'm going to rearrange my windows a bit. On the free aspect, we want to change that to 16 by 9. Go back to our directional light. We're going to change this from the pale yellow to a white. And we're going to drop the intensity just a bit so it's not so blinding. So back in the project window, we're going to go to our asset root folder. And we're going to create two new folders. We're going to make one for materials and we're going to make one for scripts. So straight into our material folder, we're going to make one new material called base color. We're going to duplicate this and hit F2 to rename the others. We're going to have a secondary color and we're going to have a player color. We're going to keep the tone and for the base and secondary colors we're going to use a gray shade. And for our player we want him to stand out so let's use something like a neon color. So now we need to set up our environment. So to do this we can go back to our hierarchy. We're going to create a new empty. We can rename this guy to environment. So after we do that, we need to go and make sure our position on our transform is set to 0, 0, 0. So now we can go back to the root. We're going to create a new 3D object. We're going to make a plane. And we're going to call this floor. And we're going to scale it to 40 by 40 on the X and Z. Make sure that our position is still 0, 0, 0. And then we'll just drag our base color onto the floor. What I like to do is to create a few cubes. We're going to move this cube above the floor. We're going to scatter this cube around a little bit to give us some reference points and then make sure to drag it forward on the Z so it's not in the way of our player. So finally it's time to make our player. In the hierarchy we're going to create another empty game object. We'll call this one player and we'll check once more that its position is zeroed out. Now our player needs the ability to see so let's grab the main camera, drag that straight onto the player Let's zero that camera out. Let's go back on the root of the player and in the inspector we're going to add a character controller component. So now that we have something to look at let's hover over the scene window and hit F to focus and we'll see that we need to pull this guy out of the ground a bit. You'll also see that the camera is not positioned where the player's head would be so let's select it and drag to where we think it should be. We can make this easier by giving our player a body that we can see. So go to the root again. We're going to create a new capsule. We'll rename this guy to player model. And then we're going to give it our player material. So let's make sure to remove its mesh collider since the character controller already has one. And we should be ready to start scripting. So before I hop into code, I like to brainstorm. So on this character, we're going to need two types of movement. We're going to need a lateral movement, or our X and Z, and that's going to be controlled by our keyboard. And then we want a rotational movement that's going to be controlled by our mouse. So I think the first script we're going to tackle is player movement. So let's go to our player. We're going to add a component. We're going to call this player move. We're going to hit enter twice, let it compile, and then we'll double click it to open it in your text editor of choice. So we'll clean this up a bit by getting rid of these comments. Let's make some room here at the top. So two variables I know I need is a float, the player speed for us to be able to control the player. And we're going to default that to 20 because it's a good value. And we also need the character controller component. So we'll type in private character controller. And then we'll just call this my character controller. So in the start, we're going to say my CC equals and this is the component that we're grabbing. And we're going to say get component. And it's just going to be character controller. So now we can go into the update. And we're going to lay out the script a little bit. 
So we're going to create a few calls for some functions. We're going to say we need to get input and then we need to move player by using that input. So we can go down below the update method and actually make these functions. So we can just say void get input and void move player. So now let's think about this input. Earlier I was saying we only need two coordinates, the X and the Y. But for this we're going to use a vector 3. So we're going to take the player movement with no Y. We're going to make a new vector for gravity with only a Y. And we'll combine those and pass the final vector to our character controller. So let's start by making a few of these vectors. We're going to need one for our input vector. And then we need another one to pass into our player controller. This is going to be called movement vector. And then we need a float for our gravity. And we're going to set this guy to negative 10. Alright, I think that's all the variables that we need. So now let's go into our first function and start using these variables. So for the first thing, we want to take our first vector, our input vector, and we're going to set this to a new vector 3. And that's because we need to assemble this vector. We need the x to be input.getAxis raw. So we want this to be between 0 and 1. This axis is going to be the horizontal axis. So if we go into Unity and go to our project settings and, and open the input manager, we can see that there's multiple axes. One is horizontal. There's also a vertical, and that's what we're going to use for our Z component. So we're just going to copy this, paste it into our, our Z, and we're going to call this vertical. And for our Y coordinate, this is where we're going to add gravity, so we're going to leave this at zero for now. On the next line, we need to compensate for diagonal movement. The player, player is going forward and left at the same time. Now, if he's only moving one direction, he'd be fine. But you can see, if you combine the two inputs, the player is actually farther than one unit. To fix this, we can normalize these values to return something in this circle so the speed is constant. To do this, we'll just take the variable and we'll add dot normalize to the end. If we were to run the code like this, you'll see that we have a problem where a player doesn't actually move the direction that it's facing. To fix that issue, we can pass it through a Unity function called transform direction. Now that we have our input vector set up and built the way we want it, it's time to take that input vector and we're going to modify it and put it in a variable called movement vector. So to begin, we're just going to say our input vector times our player speed. And that'll give us our first vector. Then we're going to combine this with a gravity vector that we make. So we're just going to say vector3.up, which is Unity's y-axis. We're going to multiply this times my gravity, which was negative 10. Now we're done with our input. So we can go on to our player move and we can say my CC, which is referencing the character controller. It has a function called move and it takes in a vector three. So we're just gonna pass in this final vector three that we made and we're gonna multiply it by time.delta time to make it frame independent so we're not running faster on faster PCs. So here's what we got so far. It's looking pretty good but you can see that we don't have any mouse movement. So let's go back into our project and fix that. So now we're gonna add another component to our player called mouse look. Once this opens, we can clean it up a bit by deleting the comments. And we'll also delete the start function that I definitely need later. So on this script, we're going to be using floats for our variables since we only have one axis to deal with. So our first input is going to be our X mouse position. Then we're going to take this X mouse input and we're going to smooth it. So we need another float called smooth mouse position. And since we know we're going to be modifying it, let's go up here. We're going to create two floats that we can modify in the inspector. One's going to be called Sensitivity, and we're going to set that to 1.5. 
and the other float is going to be called smoothing and we're going to set that to 10 and lastly we need a variable to actually rotate our player and we're going to calculate that by adding our rotation onto a variable called current look position so let's lay out our script a little bit in our update we're going to need a few functions to call get input we're going to modify input and rotate player then we'll go below the update and we're going to create these so firstly we're going to store our input in x mouse position and we're going to use another get axis raw because we want to apply our own smoothing and this time we're going to use our mouse x axis so now we go straight to modifying our input First thing we're going to do is we're going to add sensitivity to our new input. We're going to do that simply by saying times equals sensitivity. And we also want smoothing to affect this. So next we want our main smoothing to be applied. So we're going to say smooth mouth position and we're going to use a lerp which just linearly interpolates one value to another. For our A value, we're going to use smooth mouse position. For our B value, we'll use X mouse position. And then for the time, we'll use smoothing. But since this takes a value between 0 and 1, we're just going to put 1 over smoothing. We've modified our input. Now it's time to actually rotate our player. Here's where we need to use our current looking position to store our rotation. And then every frame, we're going to add onto it smooth mouse position so we'll say plus equals now it's time for our actual rotation we're gonna say transform dot local rotation because we want this rotate in local space then we're gonna set this equal to a quaternion and we're gonna use this handy function of quaternion called angle axis it's gonna rotate us around a certain axis at current looking position as our rotation and then the axis that we want to rotate around is the transform.up or our Y axis. So it's almost time to save and test. But before we do that, we need to lock and remove our cursors from the screen. So let's resurrect the start method that I killed earlier. And inside here, we're going to lock these cursors. And it's pretty simple. The first thing we need to do is say cursor.lockState. And we're going to use cursorLockMode.locked. And then we need to actually hide the cursor by saying cursor.visible equals false. Back in Unity, I noticed smoothing is set to 10. So let's change that in the inspector to 1.5 and also go into the script and change it here. Now we can quickly save and go back. In play mode, you can see now we have a decent character controller walking and moving around our scene. One final thing we can do to spice this up is to add head bob. The way our player is set up is the camera is inside the player, so the player moves and the camera follows. We can add animation to the camera, and that animation will take place within the parent. To begin, we're going to need two windows. We're going to need a animation window. I like to dock it down by the console. And then we also need an animator window. So after we have those open, we can go to our main camera and we're going to go down and create a new animation. We're going to need two animations. The first animation is just going to be static. So we're going to call this cam idle. And we only need one keyframe. So I'm just going to hit the record button. And since we're animating the Y axis, we'll change it. And all you simply need to do is delete the value and repaste it. So we can stop the recording. We'll go here and we're going to create the next animation. And it's going to be called Cam Walk. We'll hit the record button once again. And we're going to go about half a second. And we're going to move the camera up above the player. This creates a keyframe at half a second, but also one at the beginning. So we'll go down here and highlight these keyframes, hit Control C to copy, and then we'll go over to about one and paste to make this a loop. So before we stop recording, we can check a preview. So we hit this little play button and it'll give us a preview. 
and we can see that it's a little too slow. Half a second's a little too fast, so we'll go three quarters of a second. And then we can stop the recording and stop the preview. Now we can go back to the root of our player and open our player move script once more. Now we need another variable and this one's going to be a animator. And we'll just call this cam anim. And we'll also make it public so we can assign it in the inspector. So now we need a boolean so this script can keep track of whether we're moving. We're going to call this boolean is walking. To figure this out, we're going to check for head bob. We're going to do that at the very bottom of our update. So we can go below our move player and create this function. And the character controller in Unity has a default variable called velocity. We'll use that velocity to determine whether our player is actually moving or not. So we'll say mycc.velocity and then we're going to get the magnitude or the length of that vector. Then we can just wrap this up in an if statement. And we're basically just going to say if our magnitude is greater than a very small number then we are walking. And if we're not, then that means we must be standing still. So now that our script has a bool that tells us whether or not we're walking, let's use that to get our animator to play the animation that we want. We're going to say can anim dot set bool. And the first one is a string for the boolean of the animator. We haven't made that yet, but we're going to call it is walking. And the second parameter is just a true or false. And we're going to pass in our bool that we just created here to set the animator's bool. Now we can save and go back to Unity. So now we need to go to the main camera or whatever object that our animator is on. We need to select the animator window. We're going to tidy this up a bit. And now the top left, we need to go and make a parameter. And this is the bool that we just referenced in our script. And when you make these, remember that the spelling must be exact to the string that you referenced. Let's make a transition from our default animation by right clicking over to cam walk. We're going to select that transition. We're going to untick exit time. And down in conditions, we're going to add our boolean. Set this to true. So when we are walking, our cam walk will play. Now we can do the same and make a transition back to cam idle has exit time is unticked and this transition will occur when is walking is false. And our final step will go into our player and drag our main camera into the new cam anim field. So now we can hit control S to save. We'll hit play and we can see our finished product. And that was it on our first episode. I hope you join us on the next ones and help me build this into a fleshed out doom clone. Spawn camp out.